seems so <laughs> yeah you're fine you're fine you think after the 15th podcast i'd finally get this. <laughs> please keep your spit shield in place <laughs> my spit shield my spit shield Dudes to Dads is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. Hello and welcome to another podcast. I'm your host, Jason Kreidman. I also have with me Alan Bush. How are you? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Well, you just you kind of said Alan Bush. How are you? Yes. Well, I wasn't talking to myself. Oh, you weren't talking to yourself. Alan Bush, comma. How are you? (laughs) You're talking in third person. (laughs) Yeah, same. Alan is very happy to be here. (laughs) That'd be funny. We do the whole show in like third person. Alan says, (laughs) write that one down. down. Uh, We also have a very special guest, uh, one of my friends, very good friends. Awesome. uh, As well as a fellow member of our meetup group. Yes. uh, Mr. Vince, say hello. Hi, I'm Vince. (laughs) That's good. Right on, Vince. So Vince is going to be joining us. Going through some of the things, Vince. You have uh, two boys. I do, uh, Vince and Steve. They're five and four. He's a Vince Junior. He is not a junior. I gave him a different different middle, middle name. name. See, that's the thing with my dad. I put too much pressure. On him, <laughs> I made him a junior, so I took him away from it. My father. I'm named after my father. T- my first name, but my middle name is my grandfather's on my mother's side. So I'm not a junior. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. No junior names. The third, fourth. Yeah, I once knew a that. third. I knew a guy who was a third. Really? Yeah. Wow, that Everybody still happens. Still calls him junior. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I know. But that would be kind of, I think that would be kind of cool. You get to the third or yeah. fourth. That's, that's pretty that cool. that lineage down. That's kind of yeah. cool. There's something really cool about that. Like Jason Kreidman the seventh. Like, <laughs> it's just, you know. We ran out of names. We just kept going with the same one. <laughs> Wasn't that George Foreman had like six Georges or something? Yeah. But they're all the same line of kids. <laughs> oh, goodness, goodness. George. So yeah. we've got a great show yes. uh, lined up. In fact, I'm going to go over the different things we're going to be doing in the show, the different segments. Um, but remember, if you do want to get a hold of us, you have feedback, you've got questions, uh, you can reach us at podcast at dudes to yeah. Also want to mention iTunes. Yes, we're if on iTunes. We are on iTunes, yeah. as we said we would be on yes. iTunes. Yeah. But we need help. We need yes. help from the listeners. Right. And what they can do is they can go and subscribe as well as rate us. And that helps little boost us up in the little rankings yeah. there. Give it five stars and leave a comment. Yeah, That'd we want to hear some comments. We yeah. want it, we like the feedback. It's important for us to, to know sort of you know what, what people like, what people don't like. Right. Um, at least I think I'll listen. I don't know. <laughs> I might I'm sure. read one or two. So we're going to start out uh, this podcast with the mailbag. We've got a question from a gentleman, Daniel. Okay. And so we're going to go over that. Uh, we're going to go into stuff to do with a very interesting book that was brought to my attention called uh, 50 Dangerous Things You Should Let Your Children Do. Awesome. Yeah. That Isn't sounds that awesome? awesome. Yeah. Just the title alone is, is, is awesome. So uh, we're going to do that. And then we will move into a little bit of homework. As I say, I've tried to give some, uh, you know, some... Uh, tips and advice and some actual action items that people can do Mm -hmm. and then we will wrap it up with light her fire and the great dr ellen kreidman will show us the way and this one is really about what women want (laughs) <laughs> there's actually an answer to that from a woman not well from a man's perspective yeah, right? there's an answer to it i don't know that we'll understand it <laughs> yeah. but there's an answer yeah <laughs> so let's get right into it and we're going to start with the mailbag mail 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 we got mail so we got a, a letter here from daniel hey vince do you want to read the the letter from daniel can you see it on the screen right there you will be able to in four seconds <laughs> or we can start over no we can do that right now <laughs> daniel writes My son is four years old, yet my wife still treats him like a baby. She will often still help him get dressed and even still feeds him regularly. (laughs) I don't know how to convince her to stop and allow him to grow up. Wow. I'm not sure I I know how to answer that, other than the fact that there is a myth out in this world. I've got to tell you. And the myth is, well, actually, I was a believer of this myth up until a couple months ago. Oh, this happened on a personal note? Yes, this is me personally. Because okay. there, there is a very big myth going on, and this actually has to do with this. This, this question brings it to mind. Uh-huh. The myth is that children are not very capable. Right. Okay? Now, let's, let's hear that. It's a myth. 
children are actually very capable. And I took parenting classes. In fact, Vince, you took the parenting classes as well. We did great. You were in the same class. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. And so one of the things is learning that your children are very capable of doing it. Of, of doing many things and at different ages are capable of much more than we think that they are. Mm-hmm. So it's very interesting when we get a question like that, that, you know, somebody who's, let's say four, and obviously the dad, it sounds like he really thinks, you know, the kid should be getting dressed by himself and should be feeding himself. Right. And the mom is not doing that. Well, I'm not sure why, but, you know, that's the case. So from the Joy of Parenting um, workbook, if you will, or the class, there was there's some, some very interesting things about the specific ages and what kids should be essentially expected to do by those ages. Okay. When do so, they get a job? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> when do they start supporting the family? Exactly. When do they get me out of retirement? And- Vince, do you think that you believed in that myth as well? That, ch- that children weren't capable, or you think that they, you've always thought that they're I've capable? I've always thought that they were capable. Uh-huh. I didn't know how capable they were. Okay, that's gotcha. fair. So things like uh, my son coming downstairs in the morning, my wife expected him to get dressed for school at four years old. Okay. And I would take care of them in the morning, Yeah. and I would help him get dressed, and she said, no, they're capable of doing it on their own. So wow. you learned that. So I learned that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Huh. So then in a sense, you maybe didn't think he was capable. I mean, I guess at that's first. the... You're right. Yeah. First. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we I all... Back everything I just said. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, you know, we look at our kids and in and, and the way, you know, you see them growing up and obviously as a baby, you're helping them along the way and you kind of forget sometimes what you're supposed to be teaching them. Right, yeah. You know, like we are. We're teachers and at some point, you know, you're going to see... Wow, they're actually capable of doing it, but <laughs> unless we let them do it, yeah. you know, if we're just waiting for them to do it themselves, it might not happen. Right. And so I think that's a big point of it is to just allow them to do it and give them permission so that, you know, what, even if they're going to fail or yeah. whatever, you just, you're, you're giving them permission. So they're almost like little people. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, so there's a couple here that are, are they're pretty interesting. So as an example, from one to two years old, the list says carry dishes to the kitchen and you know there's a couple things and throw away their own diapers. Really? Yeah. If they're old enough to walk. Right, okay. I mean you're that's what you're assuming. You but know, I mean they are not be- going to crawl with a diaper like you know, he puts <laughs> it on his the little kid puts it on his back. He's like, "All right, I'm going to make it over to the, you know." Um, <laughs> that was gross, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but you know, or or same thing with carrying a dish. And obviously when you know when the kids are little, you're not giving them, you know, ceramic dishes. I mean, most of the time you have plastic ware uh, or whatever right, it is. Yeah. You've got these little things. But aren't they at that like big head little body phase and they kind of have this tumbling thing going on? Hey, I I agree. I, this is <laughs> okay, on the list. I, I'm just reading what's right, on the I'm list. Just, I would I, give them the diaper. I would never give them the dish. The, the dish might Even be if it was plastic? <laughs> would have had oh, food yeah. on it. Yeah, no, it's plastic. I'm not saying you know, something that you're at risk of like it falling and breaking on your no, you know, on the floor. No, we gave the boys their diapers at two. Yeah. And put them in Did the trash. Did you really? Can. Yeah. 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 yeah they I walk think over I, and throw them in the trash. Yeah, oh. that's... that's you didn't play basketball with the diaper. <laughs> no. Right. What the diaper genie? Oh, my goodness. Uh, we had like f- seven diaper genies, you know? It's What's like, I'm, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> oh, so he doesn't even know what a diaper genie oh, is. Okay. Is so a diaper genie <laughs> is this device. In fact, maybe we'll put a link on it t- to Amazon. Um, so diapers smell. Right? Yes, I realize because this. of the content in it. Yeah. <laughs> so the diaper genie is it's this all about amazing. Content. Yeah, this diaper genie is an amazing invention that you put this diaper in this receptacle, and it sort of seals it off. Uh, spins the bag around. Oh, it, uh, yeah, okay. it kind of spins the bag. Well, that spins the bag around. At the that's a different. You might have the advanced model. I didn't have the <laughs> spin around model. We were cheap, um, or the people that gave us gifts were cheap. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's just it, you know. So it, the receptacle <laughs> and it stays in there, and quite frankly, it doesn't. Stink, okay. you know. It's like, but like putting it in your trash. Just yeah. No matter what's in the diaper, it yeah. just stinks, it stinks after a day or whatever. Right. So that contains it. Um, and so yeah, I mean, the kids would put it in there, and, and like it's kind of like a like a Star Wars thing where it's it just is. like <laughs> like swallows it in there in your hand. You're like, oh, Step sorry. Yeah. Drop it in. Yeah. It up, yeah, so it's, it's, no it's pretty cool. Wow. So you'll get a diaper, Genie. Don't okay, worry. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need. And we didn't have seven, but literally, I think we had one in like every room, and like, <laughs> and then eventually, you know, they're full, and you, it just it's gross. But anyways, so that's it, one to two. So then we go, and at like two to three years old, it says help sort laundry. Okay. 
and help make beds, which I, you know, that was, that's interesting. So sort laundry, it's not folding laundry, right. but it's kind of saying, Hey, that's mine. That's my sister's or that's my brother's yeah. and it helps kind of, you know, doing those activities. Like I'm going to guess it'll make laundry take a lot longer. <laughs> my problem, I would be yeah. too retentive and say, well, that doesn't go in that pile. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. You got to let them go through it. Yeah. 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 yeah no, definitely. It's, it, 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 you know, I don't know. It would take longer, but maybe you're just teaching them, like, you know, hey, that they're going to have to help yeah. out. Or, or they can whatever. do it on their own at some point. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. And then help making the bed. Um, help making the bed, is, that's a that's that's reasonable. Sure. You know? Yeah, it's like just moving sheets around. Tucking in the sheet. Tucking in yeah, the sheet, right. putting the pillow back up on the bed, you know, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Okay, so four to five, prepare cold cereal. So, I mean, that's pretty – we did that. Yeah. Our kids do that, which – I think I did that at that Yeah, age. I mean, which – uh, no, we made easy to use. Well, yeah, I guess. I came downstairs one morning and the milk was all was completely out of the bottle. They made waffles. Vinny got up, and made both of them waffles for breakfast, which was great. Yeah, in the microwave the or what? Maple syrup. Yeah. was poured into both. That's plates. the way I like it. <laughs> Covered in syrup. All awesome. I'm thinking is it's a thirty dollar bottle. Of syrup. <laughs> yeah, right, you can't well, it says cold cereal. Yes. Though. So, so maybe yeah, it was yeah. very specific. He was at it, the did, it was great. Stage. We it, had to. We both just smiled and said wow that is pretty cool that was great that is awesome <laughs> and so uh, yeah and then the other one set and clear the table which we've done as well like you know hey yeah. put the placemats sure. down put the tables down so i mean part of it is there's a couple things i think one is you know allowing the children it's not that you know you, you don't want to stifle them from doing things and if anything you want they, they like doing this stuff sometimes i mean especially yeah. when it's new right it's very exciting you know and and it helps you that like okay hey can you set the table they're part of the family they don't feel like yeah. it's a chore right right and they're part of the family and that's really it's like everybody's chipping in and it's important to do that right so six to eight years old vacuum and make their own lunches for school you know the make their own lunches i like that one because we haven't gotten there yet <laughs> um i'm gonna take that one and discuss that are you on, are you on the cusp right now with the six well yes because my son is six yeah so he, he can uh but he's gonna be seven so yeah okay, he's yeah. He, and he could do it as long as we have the stuff there yeah i'm pretty i mean he could do it yeah 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 he could put it together sure uh nine to ten is you know get him on bathroom duty clean bathrooms and then <laughs> wash dishes <laughs> um how old are your kids friends? Uh, they're five and four. Five and four. Okay. Five and four. Yeah. So you're in that mid range there. Yeah. yeah. A ways to go. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. cleaning bathrooms, washing dishes. That's you know. Those things. So here's well, I guess the whole point of this was getting back to Daniel's question. Um, you, you know, your wife might not think your think your 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 son is capable. Um, that's that's certainly possible. Maybe she just doesn't want him to grow up. <laughs> you know, I mean that's that could be. Yeah, that um, Especially if it's like firstborn. Yeah. I imagine that when it's like a second kid, you kind of get used to the. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and then by the third kid, it's like you're you like, forget yeah, you I have think... a kid. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, well, and they also learn from their sibling, and so they sure. they, they learn right. by watching, and yeah. so usually the younger ones have that advantage. But the older siblings take care. Of the I, I think ones. to answer the question for Daniel, I I think you just have to sort of um, ask your son to start doing things. And sort of step in and ask them and say, hey, you know, how about this? Or can you do this? And I think she's got a view that he's capable. Yeah. I think that might be the way to do it. You know, yeah, kind so of a soft. Well, I, you know, scared. convincing her necessarily by saying, hey, he can do this versus actually allowing the kid to do it and her seeing it. Right. But, I, but it, of course, it always depends on what her reasonings for that. Like, if she doesn't think he's capable of it or she just likes babying it, a lot of people's excuses, well, it just gets done faster. Well, yeah, like that's that might a big be one. the truth, but it's not the point. The point right. is letting them have independence right. and a bit of autonomy. Yeah, no, yeah. you're absolutely absolutely right. Yeah. So hopefully that answers the question, Daniel. Uh, once again, if you have questions, comments, feedbacks, feedbacks? Feedbacks. If feedbacks. you have more than one feedback, if you it's have called feedbacks, feedbacks. That's plural. <laughs> um, send us an email, podcast at dudestodads.com. We also are on Twitter, Dudes to Dads. We're on Facebook. I, yes. We're on Pinterest, <laughs> Instagram, Google Plus. Anywhere LinkedIn, the internet is. Everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. I don't think we have Foursquare yet. <laughs> I don't think we need Foursquare. Are we okay? People don't need to know where we are. We're okay with that? Yeah, I don't think we're good. All right. Um, all right. Let's move on. Stuff to do. Dad, what are we going to do today? So in Stuff to Do today, we've got this book I had mentioned that um, this had come to my attention 
It's called 50 Dangerous Things You Should Let Your Children Do. <laughs> and uh, awesome. Gaver Tully is the author. I actually saw the TED Talk first. Uh, that's what brought it to my attention was the TED Talk had like three and a half million views and he discusses five of the 50. Yeah. And so it's funny because this guy doesn't have kids. But he, it, yeah, I know, which is, yeah. <laughs> go figure. A, a certain lack of credibility but at that point. But he, he, but he, he says he <laughs> rents. You play with the electrical sockets. He rents the other kids, but he actually, he has a camp or he runs like summer camps and uh, stuff about tinkering. Yes. So okay. that's the whole, so maybe in Vince, you ended up getting this book. I did get the book. Yeah. yeah. And so and I would definitely want to hear, you know, the stuff that you did. It's, um, he ended up, so this guy, um, he runs these camps and it's all about tinkering and like allowing kids to like just explore and do this stuff. So it's, it's really, really interesting. So I had mentioned this to you and I didn't even get the book yet. And Vince went out and got it cause it sounded interesting. <laughs> okay, yes. yeah. yeah. So I, I was going to couple like, uh, read a couple that stood out for me. Did you, you said you've tried some already. I do, I, I do try them, and I actually take the book with me when we're going to other people's houses now to entertain the kids. <laughs> the other kids or your own? Both. I mean, saying you're saying so wherever you go, then you bring yes, it. Yes, I just bring it. If I know we're going and there's going to be a gathering of kids, right. we bring the book, and the boys will go, oh, we tried this one at home. Let's do it. Awesome. For example, building a bomb. Which sounds much worse than it really So you're bringing a bomb over to <laughs> kids' house. No wonder we haven't invited you guys over for dinner recently. Yeah. <laughs> Not the best dinner guest when you're bringing bombs over. <laughs> so did you, I mean, you actually have done a lot of these experiments at, we have. Uh, out, out and about and at other people's houses as well. We uh, how'd it go? It was great. I yeah. mean, the book has, the, the best part of it is the way the book is structured. It tells you what you're going to be doing. So in other words, lick a nine volt battery. Yeah, that was my first one on there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it tells you, <laughs> this is the reason you're licking the nine volt battery. You know, it talks about the perception and understanding how. Oh, okay. So there's an flow. explanation behind yes, it. And, yeah. and then at the end, the child can write down what they've discovered by doing this. <laughs> okay. And so it takes you through a whole... Now, my kids, five and four, are a little young to write down their experience, right. but they love it. And they look at the book, and we talk about it. <laughs> That's so bomb, cool. For example, you know, they call it building a bomb. You're really using baking soda and vinegar and hot water. Like the volcano thing. Putting it in a Ziploc bag yeah. and throwing it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They just think it's the greatest thing in the world. That's awesome. I think you told me, how many times did you do that in a row? I did it like 14 times in a row. <laughs> because they wanted to see it again and again. I can totally tell. Why get more Ziploc bags? That so, is awesome. So are are some of these things like things that should be quote unquote dangerous, but they need to go through? Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, there's, I mean, there's one play with fire. I mean, so, I mean, the kid can burn his hand and the kid, you know, it depends. I read yeah. some of them and I was a little nervous. Play with fire. Am I creating an arsonist? Right. Are they going to enjoy this? I right. love fire. breaking glass. Right. right. So that a child, if glass breaks, they're not afraid of it. Right. They can react in the right so way. So they explain also, like the like you said, the reason that you're doing this or like yes. and how they to do, do it. Connection. Got it. Gotcha. As to why you would do and even how to do it safely? Yes. Okay. Setting your child on your lap and letting them drive a car. Oh, that's How many awesome. Of us got oh, that when we were yeah, I, remember I remember that. That's one of the that. greatest memories yeah, of childhood. They don't do that, that now. Yeah. They yeah. went to a parking lot and put my son on my lap. Yeah. And they say, really, the reason you want to do that is they understand. Uh, how powerful this large piece of machinery can be. Right. Next time you're driving the car, that's cool. They're not screaming at you, going, "Oh, hey, pay attention to me!" <laughs> right. right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You that try is cool. It. No, that is cool. In fact, well, you know what? We'll put a. I'll put a link on the website. Um, well, we have an Amazon, uh, Amazon affiliation, so we, you know, we get a couple, couple pennies if somebody clicks through. So if anybody wants to get that book, we'll put a link on there. Um, so here's a few that stood out for me. I don't see if you've done these. So the first one was the lick a nine volt battery, but it was funny. So you had told me. <laughs> about that i went and asked my son i was like hey you, you know go ahead and lick it he's like i'm not licking that i was like you don't even know what it is he goes i don't care i'm yeah. not licking it i don't need to experience it in that way you're yeah. telling me to lick it tell yeah, me yeah 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 he, right? immediately, yeah. he didn't want to do it no, he's smart the second one i thought was interesting was throw a spear i thought that was cool a spear when do you get a spear? a spear you just well you a could whittle it or, yeah like a stick you're gonna you make just, your own yeah or like a javelin or something. yeah just the idea of throwing like a spear it's just yeah. it's a cool thing yeah. it's very primal a lot of these are Oh, I say a lot of, but it, it, it's very boy. Yeah, what you yeah. would consider stereotypical boy right. centric, Absolutely. you know. I mean, my although my girl, my daughter, we used to call her Dirt Girl, um, in the you know when she was first like because she loved playing in the dirt, and we're like, all right, that's cool, you know, because <laughs> hey, not the typical stereotype for a little girl, yeah. but that's cool. Like it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and I don't, you know, we tried not to make those sort of distinctions. Right, Having a boy yeah. and a girl, it's like right. no, that's not a boy. And my son will say, well, that's a girl thing or that's a girl color. 
No, it's everybody. Yeah. yeah. We all share um, the same thing. So throw a spear was the one. Um, deconstruct an appliance. Okay. So actually, like, taking apart. We've done that one, too. You did? What did you take apart? Uh, an FM radio. Oh. An old CD player FM radio. Yeah. And they were so fascinated by the laser. The little parts the and stuff. he passes over. Yeah. And how the door works. Yeah. Going up and down to put the CD in. Did you out. actually put it back together, or no, it's no, no, done? No. The whole point is to deconstruct it. You should plan on. It being done. It never working again. Got it. Got it. Because <laughs> the, the number of pieces, once they get into it. Yeah. And see all the little tiny screws, there's no way you're right I was thinking of, like, <laughs> taking it apart and then putting it back together or Maybe something. Maybe when they're older. Yeah. Yeah. Five and four. I mean, I think, you know, as soon as we had most of the parts off, they kicked the tray and everything went everywhere. <laughs> it's like we're never going to get assembled again. So, and then the number four was uh, <laughs> dam up a creek. I thought that was cool because I I grew up. Dam up a creek. I grew up in a forest area. <laughs> and apparently and so they want to be beaters. No, but we had a creek and we would play near that creek all the time. Like there was water running through it. Like when it rained, we'd yeah. get our boogie boards out. And like, I mean, it was a it was a big part of our childhood was going down towards that water and playing and doing various things. We'd have boats that we'd you know make and we'd they'd go yeah. down the water and whatever else. So that idea of like stopping the water was just, that was cool. Like but that could, was a cool thing to do. Couldn't this like ruin an ecosystem? Well... <laughs> They do say that you should undam it when you. Oh, okay. Yes. Ruin the yes. dam. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And yeah this that is, makes sense. And this was like overflow from street. You know. Yeah. From like I was gonna the say from the stuff. hose, someone washing their car, <laughs> type of thing. Yeah, I get that. I mean, it was a creek, you know, down in civilization. It wasn't like in the middle of the, you know, Montana mountains. Or <laughs> right, something. right. You're not, you're not building a. Uber I wasn't gonna dam. drink the water. Yeah, let's, right. Let's call yeah. it that. <laughs> um, and then the last one that I, I at least spoke to me was make a rope swing, and it was kind of that same thing, is because yeah. we had this forest, we had the water, we had these. You know, we would always go down there, and, and you know, there's huge eucalyptus trees and things like that. And so, yeah. making a rope swing was just yeah. a cool thing. Um, and so, th- those are those are awesome. I mean, that that is definitely those are things that I I I have fond childhood memories. Like you said, the driving. There was ones about like you know, give him a pocket knife. I'm so hesitant. I really, sure. there's a part of me that really wants to give my son a pocket knife <laughs> because I think it's fun yeah. and I get it, but it's just that. It's overcoming that idea that there's that it's a knife. Yeah, it's still a knife. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Yeah, or let them have it during like while you're there. Yeah, you don't. I mean, because you don't want the kids also to feel like the world is a scary place. You know, you want to build their confidence, and that's that's part of it. I'm sure it's like, you know, allowing them to do things that typically you would say "Ah, you're not ready for that. Well, what what makes them not ready until you know let them try and. Cut off a finger. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Or burn down the house. Yeah, you now you know not to do that. that. Yeah, exactly. Right, because you weren't ready. At some point, we'll get into <laughs> the, my the, the stories of my childhood and um, <laughs> all the things that we did and got in trouble for. Uh, lighting fires was one of them. Um, but very small ones. Very small right, ones. Right. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah. But we were, I was fascinated with that as a kid. I mean, lighting a fire, a match, all kinds yeah. of I remember my parents... Um, very vividly saying, you know what, I, I understand that you think this is very interesting, but it can be very dangerous. He said, so if you do want to light it, just come to us and, you know, we do it. And they were really cool about it. Yeah, like yeah. they allowed me to light the match when they were there. Like, so when we had candles for a birthday or we had, all, I was the one who got to light the candles because I was so fascinated with it. Yeah. Of course, there were times where my parents were like, why are you lighting a match right now? <laughs> um, but, huh. you know, but they were, they were open enough about it and support to yeah. say like hey this is fascinating did they catch you lighting a fire is so eventually aware of it? well yeah so well maybe this predates it is that some kid i don't know if i want to go into this story <laughs> it's not criminal Disclaimer. it's not criminal but yeah. no we would light because we lived in the forest so we would like put little leaves together and things and then light these fires and so we also lived on a um uh, a big hill like these big hills yeah, and yeah. so we would go under the houses and that's where we had forts and all these kinds of things yeah. you know this is like i don't know seven to ten years old or whatever the yeah age. and so one of the things we did was play with matches and that's you know and i didn't realize that wow this could actually do something harmful right and there was a time somebody we were under somebody's house the person smelled and nothing was going crazy, but the person smelled the fire, yeah. came running down, and busted us. Like we were just, you know, four or five kids under the house. Yeah. And that, from that point on, it was funny because all the rest of the kids in the neighborhood got like grounded. Everything probably. My mom and I talked about it. That was <laughs> that was the difference, you know. We talked about why I was lighting the fire and yeah. if I wanted to do that, you know. And 
And so that that was also my entrance into like the parenting style of like, hey, what's going on? Yeah, what is what, what is going on? Like, what is it that's fascinating about that? Like, and then being supportive of it because of realizing how much I was fascinated with it, saying, listen, it's okay if you're doing it around us. And I and I for whatever reason abided by that. And yeah. So you know, I just I was more careful. I didn't do it. But then I would always say, hey, can I do the candle? Hey, can I light this or whatever? And yeah. they were cool with it and they let me do it. Yeah. You know, a couple little burns here and there, and right. like little things, but <laughs> it worked out okay. <laughs> you know, this is ed- this is digital, so we could edit that out if I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing was illegal. Yeah, everybody was swear. okay. Everything yeah. was safe. But well, thank one goodness. Incident with fire thank goodness everybody was, you know, that nothing did happen. I mean, well, now yeah. with these stories today of like, you know, kids lighting fires and stuff. But it's, it's just, you only hear about the bad stuff. I'm sure 90% of the people that had that experience are good you know yeah. what i mean it's like it's not it's you only hear about let's hope 99 stuff <laughs> yeah. well like, yeah it's probably less actually. so those are things so like i said we'll put a link on the website for the 50 things um and yeah i just thought that was interesting it's it's really cool and i, That's I look forward to doing i do that. like to see that i'd like to see all 50 yeah I should list them on the website somewhere <laughs> we will so <laughs> all right let's go into dad's homework so the homework is related to our stuff to do light a fire <laughs> yeah. Well, no, and that's the next thing. Oh, okay. Her fire. <laughs> Hell, that's right. God, see how this is all related? Yeah, it's all tying together. Um, no, we're going to... So the homework is to actually do five things on this list within the next 30 days. Oh, right that's on. a pretty easy time frame, you yeah. know, because some of them are pretty tame. So on the website, we will provide a link or list all of the 50 things. Okay. And then um, if you can go check it out in in the podcast area. Um There'll be a posting, and it'll it'll have the link to that. And How so, many have you done, Vince? Has I you? think we are up to about eleven. You've done eleven of them. The 50. Have Some you thrown okay. thrown so something out of the moving way. car? We have not. We haven't done that yet. We haven't <laughs> uh, broken something the glass yet. You know, a little nervous awesome. about those things. Did you play with fire? Uh, no fire yet. Okay. Throw fire out of a moving car. Like so, are you through. making? A, are you going down the list and go? Okay, which one's okay? Do I feel yes. okay with? You yes. know, that kind of thing. I, I kind of started with okay. I'm Versus just starting with yet. number one and going down the list. Yes, because at their age, I'm more concerned about at their age. Well, mm. did it? Does it say the age? It doesn't. It doesn't really say what age. I think you have to decide that as a parent. Okay. You know, you, it, as long as you're supervising, they can do any of it. Right. True. What are you comfortable with? teaching them that you're sure they're not going to run off and do on their own right yeah trouble. right yeah that's me yeah okay uh, so the homework sense. is do five things from the list in the next 30 days so okay. we have to do this too okay. well you don't i don't you're a i'll dude. watch you do it but <laughs> we'll have to, we'll have to report yeah. back i uh, i kind of want to do some of these <laughs> well i already know i'm not gonna be able to get him to do the, the battery. yeah i want to i want to deconstruct an appliance and get on a rope swing that's awesome yeah, that is cool. I'm not going to look the 9 battery, though, I'm pretty sure. All right, so let's move on. <laughs> Next, we've got Light Her Fire. So in this segment, Dr. Ellen is going to tell us what do women want. <laughs> no, seriously, Vince, this is, that's what it's going to say. <laughs> I know. Everyone's like, what? What? You, should, you can't see faces all, here? But yeah. it's actually, there's actually a truth to it. It's going to be a list. Well, I think what it is... It, it, I think she describes it as a man of steel and velvet. And so I think she describes what that is. So a let's get into it. A wants that. a man of steel and velvet. She wants a man who is both strong and tender. What are the steel and velvet qualities? Let me start out with the man of steel. It's confidence. He can take charge. Is somebody she can lean on. Is able to make decisions. Is goal-oriented. Is able to earn a living. Is dependable. Has a sense of honor. Has strong convictions. Is responsible. Is independent. Is courageous and will defend her openly. What is a man of velvet? He has a sense of humor. Is generous. Is patient. Is attentive. Can show feelings. Is caring. Is nurturing. He's loving. He's understanding. He's tender. He's responsive, he's encouraging, and he's good-natured. I always went around the room and asked the men in the class to tell me if they considered themselves all steel, all velvet, or both. Out of 35 men, about 15 of them usually considered themselves as steel, 15 as velvet, and the other five felt that they were a combination of both. In the weeks that followed, it became clear to everyone that those who have both traits are not only more able to satisfy a woman, but are ultimately the most self-actualized, fulfilled men in general. So now I ask you, before we continue, do you think that you are mostly steel, velvet, or both? So while this was playing, the guys here are smiling, saying, "Hey, uh, that's me." She's describing that's me exactly. to a T. Yeah, she knew exactly. Who I have knew. all those qualities. <laughs> but don't you don't yeah. you see? 
I, I could see that, you know, that how that is something that somebody would want. I mean, it's, you, you're not, um, the idea of velvet and that softness isn't necessarily being, quote, soft. Yeah. That men don't want to be. It's it's having yeah, not those. Too soft, yeah. yeah, not too soft. It's having those elements of being, you know, you can be sensitive, but still be somebody who's able to make Good a decision. Natured, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those kind of things. So yeah. I think, you know, obviously a lot of the stuff we talk about on the show is about kids and stuff, but we, we bring the light her fire segment up because it's very, very important to have a great relationship with your spouse or significant other or wife, whatever, you know, you have, um, in order to have healthy children, yeah. you know, that's, it's, it's, it's really, really important. In fact, it's the primary relationship to make sure that that's being taken care of. And so, you know, one of the things we always, I mean, I've always heard, it's just like, what do they want? Like, you know, especially when you're single, it's like, I don't get it. What is it that they want? Like, I, you know, I'm this, I'm that. Whatever. Well, it's kind of like what I mean. What that sounds like, if she is right, it's like you kind of have to be everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, yeah. I, I guess on on some level, it's an adapting personality. Because I know I don't know if your experience, but my experience is I started off more on the soft side. I wasn't very hard edged, and um, because I was shy and timid and quiet. Yeah. And as I got older, I realized that it doesn't get you a lot of women being that way. <laughs> so I had to adapt my personality, and I realized the guys who were doing that were the kind of alpha male, macho, but the guys who could take care of business. Right. So I started adopting the traits that I liked about them. And what I heard from the women on the soft side was those guys are kind of jerks on this side, too. I was like, okay, well, I won't be the jerk, but I'm going to have that strength of character right. to, and develop that as part of my personality. And yeah. I'll keep the thing they like, which they want to talk to me about with random stuff. So I, I was able to get out of the friend zone. After I that. always <laughs> say that if, if I didn't like women, Alan's the perfect the perfect guy for me. <laughs> <laughs> I started the same as Alan. Yeah. Too soft. And yeah. You, know, you had to adopt those certain traits. Yeah. You had to kind of man up. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I'm not sure about myself. I, 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 you're kind of an alpha guy. So, like, what, what would you uh, not describe? Not so much. Yeah, no, kind of. You think I so? I mean, you're a little type A. Well, yeah. That's so, true. I mean, what is it that you feel like? But I think, I think I, I am in that sense of, you know, let's say decision making and strong in that sense. But yeah, I definitely have that sensitive side. Yeah. Probably a little bit too much sometimes. Uh -huh. According to you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, according to me. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> so you control your own sensitivity. Yeah, totally. <laughs> somebody else might think it works great, but yeah, for me, I, I wish I had a you know. Um, yeah, I think. Well, you know, obviously, my mom was the one who created this list, so I sure. hope, I'm hoping that I you know was taught both yeah, sides. You probably had. My both. dad was I you know I think um, a little bit more on the steel side. Mm. You know, I mean, I think everyone sort of maybe goes to a one side yeah they veer towards um, one area but he definitely had that velvet you know i mean he i i he was a care you know he not was he still is yeah caring man and you know he was he not necessarily so sensitive per se right but, right yeah um but i did see i do see that now yeah you know, as far as like having both sides and being very loving and yeah that kind of thing. you look so, in retrospect and you actually kind of see it more after yeah. when you're a little older you kind so of it must i mean i'm sure it's it's a reflection of you know what you grew up around if sure. you had that if not you had to sort of create what it is that you want Wanted. Which is yeah. why it's important your children are going to see that, and that'll be a reflection of what they expect when they're older. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They'll emulate that after they yeah. have relationships too. Yeah. So with that, gosh, this was this went pretty quick. Vince, <laughs> we might even invite you back. Let's invite him back. I think we should have him back. I think so. The next episode. You think so? Yeah. Uh, it's, that's going to be like in a week, though. <laughs> that's all right. Now, I don't know. I'm not going to see you for a week, am I, Vince? You're not. <sighs> All right. Well, well, I'll get over it. Anyways, <laughs> thank you, uh, Vince. Thank you, Mr. Allen. Absolutely. And I'm Jason, and uh, we appreciate everybody uh, sticking with us here. Once again, remember, go to iTunes if you can and give us a review. Of course, we like the five-star nice ones. Yeah. Um, also, subscribe to the podcast through iTunes. That sort of helps us uh, boost in our rankings. Check Stitcher. I believe we're on Stitcher as well. Yes, we are. Yeah. We are so, on Stitcher. So uh, if you don't have iTunes, go to Stitcher. That's the PC equivalent and uh, check us out and give us a good rating or at least leave us a review. Yep. Yeah. And of course, email us, podcast at dudestodads.com. Twitter, <laughs> dudes to dads. Dudes to dads everywhere. There you go. All right, guys. <laughs> we'll catch you next time. Take care. See you. Good night.